video I'm going to show you how to tile a floor. The first important thing to note is you want your floor nice and clean of debris and nice and smooth. The way I do this is by using this floor scraper. Then following that you want to give it a good going over with the hoover and the best way to lay out your tiles is by giving yourself a centre line at the middle of the room. Once you've got your centre line, you can work from that outwards. Now you can either use that line as your grout line along the middle tiles, or you can set one tile actually across the middle of that, so the line goes at the middle of the tile. And the best way to do that is by measuring your tiles, and you work out how many you can fit in across the room. Now if you end up with very thin slices at either end, there's not really any point in that, because you get a lot of wastage and sometimes it doesn't look great. drawn out my centre line and I'm just laying out a few tiles just to see how they fit and go together. That way you can get the lie of the floor if there's any dips, which tiles you need to build up with cement, which ones need to go lower and also where you need to do your little cuts and things like that. And You want to get this sorted before you mix your tile cement and then it may be worth with a small room like this just cutting all your tiles first to size. If not, get your lines laid out and get your main tiles out and try not to put any tile cement around the sides and then you can work out all your cuts after and do those in a second batch. So you've got the line there, you can measure from that into the wall and you can get the measurement of the tile you need to fit the gap. The important thing to remember is always measure from the clean edge of the tile out. So you cut edges over there. So if, say, you were applying it to this tile here, you want to take your measurement from the straight edge out. Now, by doing this, if you've got an angle that isn't at 90 degrees, and say you're cutting this tapering back towards this way, you make sure that the cut edge is the taper. Don't make the mistake of measuring from this edge to there, doing the cut, and then realising when you spin it round is wrong. So you always measure from the clean edge of your tile out, put your mark, same here, put your mark, draw a line with the straight edge, and then always put a little squiggle on the side you don't want, and that's your waste. And then, when you cut your tile like this, you can see my cut edge is tapered, so this end is wider than this end, and then when you put it in, it will fit in just like that. I've not put any tile cement down yet, I'm purely just laying these out to make sure that I get all my cuts in place before I put the tile cement down. It's only a small room, so I'm going to do them all before I lay them. If this was a big room, I would work up my straight centre line, I'd work out from that with all my complete tiles, I'd leave all the cuts and I'd do those later. Right, I'm just going to show you how the tile cutter works on a small bit of tile. Once you've decided on what size piece of tile you need, if you'd measured this now and you said you were going to say there and there. Get your straight edge and draw a line straight down there. Now it doesn't have to be square. If it's square it does help because it will butt up against the 90 degree bit at the end of this. But you can do 45 degrees or whatever you want. You just have to move the tile around. But make sure the tile cut you get is big enough for the length of tile you're doing. Obviously if you turn something diagonally it's going to need to be a bit longer. Okay. Now so once you've got your line, you've got a cutting wheel under here, line up the one end with the cutting wheel and the other end with the marker on your tile cutter. And then once you've lined this up like that, you score along the tile and then you just hold the tile down and push and there's your cut bit of tile. Just to show you for continuity, there's the waste. So if you needed to cut, say, a square piece, like down there and across there, then you'd need to use the electric tile cutter for that. Here's my electric tile cutter. You've got your tray here, this is what you put your tile on. You've got your cutting disc, diamond tip. Under here you've got a water tray and your blade runs through that and that keeps the disc cool while it's cutting. Right, I'm going to turn the cutter on and I'm just going to cut along the line I've drawn on my tile. Along there and along there.
The other advantage to laying a few tiles out like this is just getting an idea of the level of the floor. This floor was screeded anyway, so it's fairly level. If you're doing an old floor and it was a little bit wonky, you may want to put a straight edge across the floor and just have a look for any low points or high points. And you either want to scrape them out, or if you can't do that, you need to know where to build them up. Now if you look, for example, here, I've got one tile that's slightly tilted, and I know that when I push it down, that end is the one that needs to be raised. So I know I need a little bit more tile cement in that corner because there's a slight dip. That'll bring that tile level with that, and I'll bring this one down level with that one there. So these are the things that are good to plan before you get your tiles out. Just take your time. You don't want to get that tile cement down until you know you've got it all sorted and possibly your edge tiles are cut. As I've said before, if you're just doing the bulk of the whole tiles, do that first and leave the rest of the floor clean and do all your cuts after. Because I'm doing a small room, I've done it all up front. The other thing which may seem obvious but you need to remember is when you're doing a room like this and you've only got one door on the room, obviously you need to start your tiling from the far end of the room and work your way back to the door. Otherwise, if you start the door and work your way back, you're going to get trapped in the back of the room and you can't walk back over the tile cement or the tiles when it's fresh and you've just laid them. By cutting my tiles before I've laid the floor, I'm able now to start up that end and work my way back. Obviously, when I started the tiling, I started from the door out because I wanted to get the look of these whole tiles. And this is what I was telling you about the look and appearance of a room. So I've managed to get about five whole tiles in. And this one looks like a whole one, but it's got a tiny bit cut off, and the same over there. Now the reason I've got thin cuts at the back and I didn't take them off this way, was as I said, to give the effect of the whole tiles, but also I'm having my toilet over there, and there's a sink there, so you won't really see those cuts anyway. If it was a big room, and I didn't have anything on the floor covering the tiles, I probably would have shifted this tile along that way and made this one a bit thinner and that one a bit wider to match up with that. Like I said, it's entirely up to you, but just plan these things beforehand so you get a feel and a look of the floor or the wall, whatever you're tiling, that you want. The other thing to note in this room, the walls aren't square. So what I've done is I've got the shower tray square with these two walls. And if you look, this wall is where my sink is going, by here. So I've basically worked these tiles off that wall there. And the reason I've worked off that wall is it's going to look bang on parallel with the sink unit. And that's probably going to be the focal bit that catches the eye when you walk in the room. Right, now I'm ready to lay the tiles. I'm going to take these tiles back up. I'm going to stack them back in order so that I'm able to place them from that end and work back towards the door. When they're all laid, I can leave the room without having to walk over them and let them dry. This is what I'm using for tile cement. When using this, you want to put water in your bucket and you always add the powder to the water. But if you read the back of the instructions, it'll tell you for that particular tile cement exactly how much to use. Okay, I've lifted my tiles up. I'm ready to put my tile cement down. Here we go, this is the kind of texture you want, okay? So when you do it like that, it dollops off, okay? So it's workable. But be careful, because once it starts to go off, it goes off quick. What I'll do is get my trowel now. I'll spread it with a flat side. So I've got a nice coverage. use the, the fork bit in a minute. Once you spread a nice thin layer and you want to get your travel and you want to put your grooves in it like that. spacer like there in the cross that'll line them all up square and then you just want to put your spacers vertically then and push them like that just making sure you've got your right tile in place just drop it on push it lightly across don't put too much pressure until you've got it in place and then just give it a push until it's level 
with the other tile where you want it and then you will want to go over it with a spirit level just to make sure the floor is flat in a minute but because of the planning earlier you're now able to work quick with this that's the beauty you wouldn't want to be messing around with rapid set tile cement if you had not done your planning that's for sure now when you've got small little pieces it's hard to get the trowel in don't be afraid to put a bit of tile cement on the back of a tile and just trowel it on like that and then add the tile rather than apply it to the floor so i've just finished the tiling I clean the tiles as I went along, make sure all the tile cement is off, you don't want that sticking. And now we're just going to have to leave it until we're ready for grouting, which should be in about two hours. Two hours have passed, the tiles have set nicely. I've given them a bit of a wash and a brush and make sure there's no dust on it, ready for grouting. So now I'm going to mix the grout. I'm going to use a bucket trowel just to mix it up. I'm going to do it by hand, because I don't need much. And then I'm going to use these squeegees, one there and one there. I've got a tiny bit of water in this bucket and I'm just going to add the powder to the water and mix it up until I get the right consistency. I'm using this bag of Mapai grout. I'm using a limestone which is going to match my walls. This stuff is Mapai anti-mould flexible coloured grout and it's a five kilogram bag. And so we'll just add this to the water and then we'll just mix it up like that. Mixing flour with eggs, and the way I describe it is you want an almost gooey texture. You see that? It's kind of a bit gloopy, it's not quite falling off the trowel, but it's like runny. Okay, and I will leave that for five minutes and it'll go off even more. And that's about right. You don't want it wet, but you don't want it too solid either that you're really struggling to push it in. But there's a couple of types of squeegee you can use. I'm just going to apply it using this one for the minute just to show you. Get it into the crack like that and you want to just rub it in and you want to go back and forth in different directions and just work it all in. The important thing is to go over this in different directions and that way you make sure you work it into the gaps. So go forward, backwards and then go lengthways across the line and it'll push it all in. You'll also find the larger the tiles the less grout you use and it'll show you that on your packet of grout the rough coverage. Obviously if you've got lots of lines with smaller tiles you're going to use a lot more grout. If you've got bigger tiles you've got less gaps to fill. So you can also use this squeegee and this works much the same and you can just go back and forth like that. They're sometimes a bit more comfortable. When you've got your excess grout over the tiles just get this squeegee and just rub really hard and scrape it all off. And we'll leave that for about five to ten minutes and then I'm going to go over it with a damp cloth just over the tiles to start, not over the joints. Then we'll leave another five minutes and you'll see as it's starting to go off, then we can go over the joints then. And you've got plenty of time with the grout to, to work it down gently, but what you don't want to do is saturate it and take all the grout back out. So, so there you can see now my grout's still a bit wet. I've just used a very damp cloth just over the tile, not the grout. Just wipe the excess off and I will leave that for about ten minutes, okay? Right, so I've given it a sponge over now, three times. Once it goes off really hard, you can give it a wash with a, a wetter sponge then. There's my finished floor with all the grout. I'm obviously going to finish this end off with a skirting board. Now I've just got to box this bit in of the wall and it'll look lovely.